Hello and welcome to Paper Space Tutorials. My name is James Skelton, and today we are going to be talking about getting up and running with stable diffusion and gradient notebooks. So first, before we get started, there's a bit of preparation we need to do. The first thing you'll need is a Paper Space account, and all you need to do is go to consult.paperspace.com and sign up there or log in to access your account. You will only need a free account for this tutorial. Next, go to huggingface.co and sign in or sign up for an account. You're going to need this access later. Let's go back to the gradient console and head into a project of our choice. I'm in demo. Then once we're in that project, we can go to the notebook creation page and quickly create a stable diffusion notebook by clicking on the stable diffusion runtime tile here and then selecting a machine of our choice. I'm going to be using the free GPU today. Uh, this will run on any of our available GPUs. My recommendation uh, for free users is the free GPU and for pro users is the A4000. Once that's done, you can hit start notebook. Be sure to give it a minute or so to spin up. You'll know your notebook is ready as indicated by this running green status indicator in the top left. Let's go into the file navigator and go to the stable diffusion notebook. And we can get started with setup by running this first cell. This will install the necessary packages we need to use with stable diffusion in this notebook. We should particularly note the diffusers library, which is what we will use to get the pre-trained models via hugging face. Scroll down to the next section and click on the link in the markdown. This will take you to the stable diffusion v14 model card on a hugging face. Here you will be prompted to accept a user agreement to access the stable diffusion models with diffusers. Once you have assented to that agreement, you can then go to your huggingface.co slash settings slash tokens and copy your hugging face token and paste it into the code cell below. This will give your diffusers library uh, authentication access to the stable diffusion repo that we want to use. Next, we're gonna make an outputs repository for our inference process. Here we have the inference section. This is where we will set up the code to generate our images. After the imports, torch and diffusers, after the imports, we're going to set our model ID to the exact same values that were in this huggingface.co repository. We'll also set our device to CUDA so that the pipeline knows to use our GPU during this process for the inference. Next, we're going to instantiate our stable diffusion pipeline using the dot from pretrain method to load in uh, the models from that model ID as half precision. We're also telling it to use the auth token that we set up earlier so that it can know that it has permission to access these. We'll then use two to make sure that our pipeline is being uh, stored on the GPU. The last two variables to consider are the sample num equals five. This is the number of loops we're going to use to uh, run our inference process and corresponds to the number of images we are gonna get. And this list object stores them for use with some of the later code that we have provided in this notebook, which we will talk about in just a moment. Finally, we have the most important a uh, variable part of this process, which is the prompt. The prompt gives the user an adjustable amount of control over the image generation process and its outputs by influencing it with text information. We're going to use the prompt, a Corgi astronaut on Mars, which is the default prompt for this notebook in this demo. During our training loop, we're going to use pipe with our prompt and a few other notable arguments that will help make our generation process run more smoothly and more accurately to our desires. In particular, I would like to call attention to four of these arguments. They are guidance scale, height, width, and number of inference steps. The guidance scale scales between 1 and 20 and controls the amount of influence your prompt has on the generation process using classifier-free guidance. A scale of zero would generate random images uh, corresponding to an unsupervised inference process, and a scale of 20 would force the model to try as hard as possible to follow the prompt. Generally speaking, we want to be somewhere in the middle, and the authors recommend 7.5. I'm using 9.9 .9 for the demo today. The height and the width control the size of our output images, 
And the number of inference steps referred to the number of diffusion steps that are being taken by the model to get to our final output. We're then appending these to the list and displaying them. So now that we've walked through the whole process, let's run the code cell and see what we end up with after running stable diffusion with diffusers. Now that we've walked through it, let's run our training loop and check back in when it finishes. It's worth noting that the first time you run this may take a little bit longer than other times as it has to download the models from the Compviz Stable Diffusion v14 Hugging Face repository that I mentioned earlier. Uh, after the first time, it will no longer need to do that and it'll be much faster with the models stored in the cache. You can also hash out this pipe section to more quickly rerun the code. As you can see, it's downloading the models we need here. And once it's done, it will complete the image generation process. While this is happening, I want to briefly mention the high cost FP32 full precision uh, training loop that is in the code cell below. If you are running a more powerful GPU other than the M4000 with paper space, then I recommend using this code cell instead of the latter, but you won't see a significant decrease in um, inference image quality uh, between the two. That being said, this is more costly, so you will want to run the half precision if you are on a weaker GPU or the free M4000. Let's check back in when this is done. All right. Now that training is done, you can actually look at your images in the file navigator by opening this outputs folder. But you can also, within the notebook, find out quantitatively how well your image generation process did and determine what the best image you generated is using CLIP. This code sample was adapted from Boris Demas' Dolly Mini Inference Pipeline, which I highly recommend you check out if you have not already. And what this does is rank our images based on their accuracy to the original inputted prompt. And as we can see here from the examples, this image here being the most accurate with a score of 38.82, we slowly lose some of that accuracy to the prompt as we scroll down. As things become more cartoonish, less realistic, or um, even are missing certain elements like this final one, uh, which has no reference to the moon we can still see that it, it recognizes that it's a corgi, so it's still getting a score that is you know, not too far below the other, but it is still a very effective way of determining how well your model performed on a quantitative level. Finally, we've also provided a means to upscale and restore the sometimes wonky facial images produced with stable diffusion with GFPGAN. And all you have to do to run GFPGAN and upscale your images is execute these two code cells at the bottom of the notebook. Once that's done, you will have completed the stable diffusion inference uh, walkthrough, and you should be able to execute this on your own. My recommendation is that you play around with some of the parameters in the stable diffusion pipeline, most importantly, the guidance scale and the prompt. These will help you to generate more interesting and different images, that more accurately reflect your uh, desired inputs. Be sure to check out some of the other paper space tiles like Dolly Mini if you are interested in computer vision and image generation on GPUs. But with that, we are done with the tutorial. I really appreciate everybody for watching and I hope you enjoy using stable diffusion with free gradient notebooks.